Every license of Creole Parametric comes with a number of free light modules, and one of them is for manufacturing, and it's called Expert Machinist. To start Expert Machinist, go to File, and then New, and we're going to change our model type to Manufacturing, and the subtype to Expert Machinist. I'm going to leave the default name, and I'm going to use the default template, and then click OK. And now I'm in Expert Machinist, and you'll notice with my template, all I have is a default coordinate system. And you get this wizard over here. I admit the dialog box is straight out of the 1990s. And it gives you some basic instructions to get started. It tells you that you need to start off by creating an NC model, and then you have to define an operation. Uh, but I'll point out that the command in here is outdated. It says from the menu bar select, and I think this was from back in Wildfire 5.0, but it clearly doesn't apply to the Creo age. So I'm just gonna quit the NC wizard. I'm gonna go through the first step, which is creating your NC model consisting of the reference part that you want to create and the workpiece. And so in the NC model group, you can add model if you already have an existing NC assembly. That does require one of the machining licenses for Creole Parametric. So I'm going to create a new model. And it asked me for a name for it. And again, just because I'm a little lazy right now, I'm going to accept the default suggestion. And now let me go to where I have the file that I want to machine. And here's the basic part, and so it places it in here. And now what I'm going to do is define the stock material. And over in the left, we have the menu manager. If you already have existing stock, say a part that you already want to use, that is the correct size billet that you already make, you could use that. But I'm going to create stock. And when I do that, you can see that we get this transparent preview that it is suggesting around my model. And I don't have any saved views in the template here, so I'm going to define one real quickly. Let's have this surface face the front of the screen, this surface face the top of the screen. And what you'll notice is the stock that you get just fits your part exactly. And I like to have a little extra material around there to start off with. So I'm going to go to the Options tab in here. And first off, it's using millimeters. For this one, I'm going to design in inches. And for the X direction, that is 2 and some change. I want this to be 2.5. So I can change the dimension either in the Options tab on the dashboard or double-click the dimension on the screen and punch in the value that I want. And I'll do that for the other two directions. So for example, there's this 11 and change. I'm going to make that 12. And what it does is it adds material evenly about the model. And I like that. So I can machine a little bit off the bottom, a little bit off the top. And this last dimension over here, eight and some change. Let's change that to a value of nine. And there, now we're just slightly wider than the part itself. So that's good. I'm happy with my stock. Oh yeah, I want to point out that instead of using a rectangular workpiece, you have the ability to do a round workpiece. Uh, and you can either do envelope or custom from over here. But again, I set up my rectangular workpiece. I'm happy. Let's hit the check mark out of here. And the preview of the workpiece now goes to a transparent green color so you can see your reference model inside of there. So now that I am finished, I will click Done out of the menu manager. Now it asks me to place it somewhere in my model. And I am going to turn on my datum planes. It looks like my coordinate system is offset a little bit from this. And I like to have it sort of set up with the Z orientation pointing up correctly to begin with. And I can't see my reference model inside of here. So I like to turn on the display in the accessory window. And that way I can say, hey, let's have this surface top and this surface. Right now it's suggesting normal, but I want that to be coincident instead. And let's see, lining up some of the other different planes. Let's line up this surface here and that surface over there. Oops, looks like I got something wrong in the first constraint. Let me see if I can undo. 
let's do a new constraint and for my next constraint let's do this surface and this surface over here and make sure it's going to give me another constraint new constraint and that one over there that looks good let's hit the check mark and when you're working in manufacturing it's going to automatically change everything to an absolute accuracy that's this is another one of those situations that requires absolute instead of the default relative accuracy so i will accept the suggestion let's click ok and now i have my model in here and next step is to create an operation which we will cover in the next video and to get on my soapbox for a minute just like I believe that all design engineers should do analysis in order to make better models, I also believe that all design engineers should do a little bit of their own manufacturing to understand how to design for manufacturing in order to make something that is going to be affordable and easily buildable. I hope you like this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.